Hey y'all. Thought I'd tell you a story about uh, a Chinese restaurant I was in. And uh, every little town in Manitoba seems to have had or has a Chinese restaurant. Just the way of the prairies. And um, this one place I was in um, wasn't uh, the cleanliness of, of places. Um, the outside looked like it had been condemned. There was coke racks, pieces of Coca-Cola racks, and uh, um, the wire uh, shelves from refrigerators and such nailed over the windows and um, just looked like it had been condemned or uh, wasn't operational. But lo and behold, he was. Um, and uh, basically what had happened is windows had been vandalized and uh, he had to use those to uh, fix his windows. So um, anyway, he was quite a character, this uh, fellow. He wasn't Chinese himself. Um, he seemed to have a, a hatred on for, for Chinese folks for some reason. Um, he kept, kept, whenever he was talking about the former owners or uh, such, he would be referred to them as the dumb Chinese, which uh, I'm, I'm not a racist myself, so I, I can't uh, fathom what he was, what his issues were, but there was some, some uh, ethical, or not ethical, uh, ethnic issues between uh, his background and, and Chinese, I guess. So, anyway, he used to be apparently a chef um, in Banff. And uh, uh, just, if you can picture this place, uh, there was most droppings on the floors. Um, the inside needed extreme renovation. You know, every booth was torn up. Uh, every counter was dirty and, uh, well, not just dirty, filthy. Um, and people were still ordering takeout from this place. Um, I was in the basement, and the basement was a wet, moldering kind of place. It had get you know got water a lot, and uh, but had tons of stuff in it, tons of stuff. I got uh, pottery, um, hires mugs. I got Coke glasses. I got signs. I got. I got tons of stuff, and the place had already been picked once by some folks out of out of Ontario, Toronto, or somewhere, and they had paid fifty dollars for coke trays. So every coke tray that the guy had left was fifty dollars, including the ones, of course, the ones that were left were worth maybe twenty five, thirty, forty, maybe fifty retail. And uh, he wanted fifty dollars for them all. It didn't matter what coke tray it was. They were fifty bucks, so he sold all the valuable ones prior for for fifty a piece, obviously. But he still had stuff. He had stuff upstairs. He had stuff in the basement, and it was all left by prior owners. Um, for some reason, a lot of the old school Chinese uh, restaurants tended to hoard some of this stuff. They just saved it for um, for future use. Uh, probably just the same attitude from the 30s, I guess, as uh, people who grew up, and anybody who grew up in the 30s that uh, uh, had a tendency to save things for reuse. But uh, they're prolific in it. They were saved a lot of stuff, and this place was full. Um, he had a, an orange crush clock up on the wall that he refused to sell. Uh, nobody could buy it. Uh, and so I got the big idea one day to walk in with a, uh, an old office clock and offered 85 bucks and this other clock in trade. And he immediately took the clock down and, and traded clocks with me. But uh, I couldn't understand him about three quarters of the time. Um, his English was horrific. Um, and my Chinese or, well, whatever, Indonesian or whatever he was, uh, I don't speak any other, uh, any other language, so 
I couldn't communicate with him as as, uh, as well as I would have liked. Um, he had uh, in the back, he had uh, bottled Coca Cola and bottled other glass bottled drinks, uh, still in the eight ounce glass bottles. And at the time, um, 7 Elevens were doing the same thing. They had uh, cases and cases of um, these glass uh, drinks, and basically the um, bottlers were getting rid of their glass bottles in one last bottling run. And I, I assume that's this was the same situation. He had gotten a bunch of these uh, bottled drinks just fresh from the bottling plant like 7 Elevens had. Um, so I had bought one, and uh, the first gulp, I realized <laughs> these were actually stuff. This was in the early '90s, and and this the drinks were actually from probably about early '80s. <laughs> they were uh, far from fresh, <laughs> um, so so that uh, so I never bought a drink there again. Um, I also didn't eat there. Um, I I just. I couldn't eat there after seeing the conditions. Um, there was a Pepsi sign, a Pepsi bottle sign he wouldn't sell. And the reason he wouldn't sell it is it was leaning up against the wall in beside a fryer. And it was preventing the grease from spattering on the wall. And the grease would spatter on the side of the sign and then drip back into the fryer. And the, the grease was pretty disgusting too, congealed with God knows what in it. Um... And when I was picking the basement, I had brought up a bunch of stuff and it and moldering, dirty, grungy stuff. And I said, you know what? And basically motioned I'd put it in the in the um, the back room near the door. And he said, no, no, no. Here, here, here. Where he was cooking food, where <laughs> he wanted me to put it right beside where he was cooking. Which, which made my stomach turn a couple times, and I just couldn't imagine, you know, the people that ordered takeout from this place, actually uh, not getting sick, because um, there was, like I said, there was most droppings on the counters and on the stoves, and um, and it was filthy. The place was just disgusting. Um, I've been in lots of restaurants that uh, the, in, in this case, the front. Uh, the front definitely showed what the back was like um, but uh, I've been in some restaurants where the the front looked sparkling clean and fresh and and crisp and uh, then get into the kitchen and just realize that it was the most disgusting unhealthy place around uh, and then I've been in other restaurants where the front is worn and you know the it's clean but it's looks grungy because it's just because it's so worn out but uh, then get in the back and the kitchens are sparkling clean so you know they're old but sparkling clean so you can never tell with these restaurants um, you never know what what kind of situation you're you're walking into but um, but this guy's place, yeah, his the front of the restaurant showed what the back was like. The back was worse, actually. <laughs> but um, anyway, I've I've been in a lot of a lot of really good Chinese restaurants too. So uh, it's just this particular guy. He was he was quite the he was a character. Um, even at his when he passed away, he had he hadn't had been in the place for a couple of weeks after he passed away. It turned out. Uh, which is rather sad, but um, uh, his the estate auction that he held or that was held for the place that garnered even some some goodies popped up from it because there was stuff obviously that he wouldn't sell at the time that uh, ended up going at this this auction. But it was it was quite the place. Um, it was like exploring uh, the basement was kind of like exploring tunnels <laughs> in a way the there was the second half of the basement was very almost uh labyrinth like and uh but i i pulled i remember pulling a cardboard coke sign off the back of a shelf in the back corner of this basement 
it took me probably an hour to get the thing out of there but but I still managed to, to buy it um, I got quite a bit out of there I went back a couple times two or three times and uh, bought stuff each time but really different place um, one of those experiences you you remember and and, and uh, <laughs> talk about um, I got another a bottle there with uh, it was a syrup fountain bottle with uh, Coco Cola on it. It said K O K O Cola on the bottle with a K. Um, just back when uh, Coca Cola was fighting trademark infringement and such. It's from that era. Still have it. It's for sale, but uh, it hadn't been for sale for years. It's been in my collection for a long time. But it is now for sale. I'll provide a picture of it in the, in the photos as, as well in the video. Um, it was quite the place. The this it was the South Seas Cafe, I believe it was called. Anyway, um, that's the story. Kind of a rambling, uh, rambling uh, bit of uh, literature there for you. <laughs> anyway, so safe picking. Happy picking. Take care.